Clint Eastwood's The Enforcer beat Michael Bay to his best movie by a good 20 years. Despite having been a star for decades, there are surprisingly few Clint Eastwood movie franchises in existence. Clint always preferred to tackle new characters and stories, so outside of the Dollars trilogy or his Every Which Way duology, he largely avoided reprising the same part. The key exception is the Dirty Harry movies, where Eastwood played San Francisco detective Dirty Harry Callahan a grand total of five times. The original 1971 thriller was both hugely successful and controversial, with its story of a cop who takes the law into his own hands to stop a vicious serial killer. The first sequel, Magnum Force, dealt with the vigilante theme head-on when Harry faced off with a squad of murderous cops, and the series became a reliable one for Clint throughout the 1970s and 1980s. After the final entry, a rumored Dirty Harry 6 didn't happen despite audience interest in one final ride. Even so, Dirty Harry is still the character Clint is most closely associated with. Dirty Harry's sequel The Enforcer predicted Michael Bay's The Rock. The Enforcer took Harry to Alcatraz years before Michael Bay's best movie. Harry and Kate in The Enforcer. The third Dirty Harry misadventure The Enforcer saw the detective and his new partner Kate Moore, Tyne Daly, chasing down a militant group dubbed the People's Revolutionary Strike Force. Much of the sequel is spent with Harry learning to work alongside a female partner, with all the required shootouts and foot chases around iconic San Francisco landmarks. The Enforcer's finale takes Harry and Moore to Alcatraz Prison to take down the PRSF, who lay siege to the island and are holding the mayor hostage. The Alcatraz siege is the standout set piece of the film, and The Enforcer plays like a prototype version of Michael Bay's The Rock. Michael Bay's 1996 epic saw a team of rogue marines taking over Alcatraz with nerve gas rockets, and it was up to Sean Connery's former prisoner and Nick Cage's dorky chemical weapons specialist to save the day. Needless to say, The Rock features more explosions, gunfights, and slow MO shots than all Dirty Harry movies combined. Even so, the rough skeleton of the Bay film is still present in The Enforcer. The Rock does a far better job with the Alcatraz siege premise. Michael Bay's second movie fleshes out The Enforcer's concept to the Super Max. The Enforcer's final set piece is the highlight and features one of the saga's trademark downbeat endings. The mayor may have been saved, but it came at a high cost that does little for Harry's faith in the system. Action movies were very different in the 1970s, so the finale is more grounded and lacks the bombast that Bay would bring to the idea. The Alcatraz sequence has Harry and Kate running around different parts of the prison and occasionally shooting members of the PRSF before Callahan blasts their leader with a rocket launcher. The Rock is essentially die hard on Alcatraz, and Bay's second feature milks the premise for all it can. It might be the best Michael Bay movie, with the film featuring great performances, with a special shout-out to Ed Harris's complex villain, action set pieces, and dialogue. The story also allows Connery's Mason and Cage's good speed to explore the prison in full, moving from the cell blocks to the sewers, and they even get to go on a mine cart ride. The Enforcer's use of the famous prison made for an atmospheric and symbolic place for the ending to take place, but it's ultimately a backdrop. The Rock makes Alcatraz itself a character, and a location that both helps and hinders its heroes. Clint was obviously taken with the island and its history, since three years later he starred an escape from Alcatraz, a thriller based on a real-life 1962 escape attempt.